Guys, this is Clazard, and I've got the always irrepressible, hilarious rise alongside me for this uh, com dual commentary. We are doing game two of the Shinhan Winners League matchup between CJ Entis and Istro. Um, if, if, you've, if you haven't seen game one yet, please go and watch that because the results of that will be spoiled in this game. This is going to be Iris versus C. Really, Iris with a emphatic, dominating, um, almost sadistic victory over poor Sunny Fu, who um, who really did deserve better because I thought he played a decent game of StarCraft. All right, he wasn't perfect. He was outplayed. He was outthought, but he, he tried his best, and I think he, he deserved a little bit better than what Iris uh, served up to him. Uh, but this is going to get a little bit more serious now. It's going to be Iris versus C really, and C really does have a little bit more experience than the uh, newcomer Sunny Fu, and should be able to put up much more of a fight. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to this matchup, uh, and it'll be interesting to see which of these players is going to come out on top. Yeah, at the moment, I can only assume that once again, straight by statistics, that we are going to see Iris come out on top. But uh, with TVTs and, and mirror matches in general, it's hard to say who will win because sometimes you can just chalk it up to a build or a loss, uh, or sometimes just the way that the TVTs and the mirror matchups work, uh, one player can just completely out uh, outthink the other player. So we'll have to see if uh, Iris manages to hold up his first win and uh, justify his performance with a second win. Iris is the red Terran on the bottom right, and uh, that would mean that really is the yellow Terran at the top right in the 2 o'clock position, uh, or 1 or 2 o'clock position. So, um, I mean, this is Neo Harmony, and uh, this is going to be, I, this is a great map for TVTs. We've seen some great ones in the past, uh, specifically the one that, the first one that comes to, to mind is of course uh, 4GG versus uh, I forget who it was but it was a really weird TVT that me and Collar actually had a lot of difficulty commentating because the uh, the absurd tactics that we ended up seeing uh, being done here each player kept trying to take the other's natural temple expansion and uh, they kept retaking and trying to take each other's expansions I don't know why uh, so it ended up being a very odd build so uh, we may see more of that but we've also seen a lot of vulture play on this map so we'll have to see if they decide to go uh, for straight vulture builds who knows though it's still a little bit early as we watch their first person point of view yeah I don't know what it is with Terrans and men's on bike and men on bikes uh, they really <laughs> seem to have a thing for them but <laughs> I won't say anything more than that. We're just looking at the first-person view mode of both these players and showing you just how crazy uh, an APM both uh, these pro players have. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, it'll be interesting to see again what choice of strategies the players go for. If if either of the players try something risky or both players are going to come out with fairly standard builds. It's, it's so far uh, the, the the builds are uh, mirroring each other. Both players have taken their extractors. Both players have their their racks and looks like both players are, are scouting uh, at almost uh, an identical point in time uh, and uh, I actually think that Iris might be scouting in the wrong, C really definitely seems to be scouting in the wrong direction, he is scouting uh, clock, counterclockwise, uh, sorry clock, yeah he's scouting counterclockwise uh, and if Iris does, Iris actually hasn't sent a scout out, or actually Iris has sent a scout out and Iris is scouting cross, cross map so the two SCVs are probably going to run, run into each other each, each time, uh, sometime soon uh, and uh, neither player is really going to have a scouting advantage but yeah, um, Terran versus Terran like, matchups, sometimes it can be exciting, other times it can just degenerate into massive macro wars. Uh, the, the time when they really get boring is when they just turn into these positional wars where neither player is willing to make an attack and both players are, are, are playing defensively. Uh, and I'm hoping we won't have that here. Yeah, you know, I, I think that TVTs are the most apt to be getting, uh, or, or, or the highest possibility or probability to, to actually go into a stalemate because really uh, tank turret builds are boring as hell and uh, you know it's hard to advance I mean how do you really advance you're gonna have to lose a lot of troops in order to do so and the question is is the position worth it so these are things that the players always have to think about and oh look at that Iris managing to squeeze by really his marine that's just sitting on the ramp whereas uh, Iris has two marines on his ramp so he's gonna be able to deny any scout coming from him so he's gonna he's gonna have the information once again early in this game and look at this Look at that. We're going to see a two factory coming straight out of Iris. So uh, it looks like with the information that he knows and what he's expecting to see out of really, he's going to try to get the advantage here. And really, let's see if he decides to put down a second factory or it is a second factory. So he's actually going to be probably in a pretty good position to deal with anything that could be coming out of Iris. Um, so that could have been very good foresight for him based on the information that Iris got and the information he didn't get. And uh, I got to say, I like that play from him. So now he's got a vulture out early and and uh, he's going to have a later second factory, but he is going to be able to reinforce in time to deal with any two-fact build that might be coming from Iris. 
Yeah, clever move by C really. It's it's always interesting to see the psychological interplay between the players. Uh, and, and and the Vulture is especially clever. He's got a Vulture and he's got four Marines. And he realizes that he needs to break down Iris' door and get the scout off, which is why he's gone for the Vultures early on. Iris having gone for the Machine Shop is going to try and get a Siege Tank up. And he, he Iris is expecting this. Iris putting the second Machine Shop up as well. So Iris is really committing himself here to try and get some early advantage and press home an early advantage against C really. But with only the three Marines, he's pulled his SCV away. With only the three Marines, he's not going to be able to hold that front door, I don't think, uh, on that ramp. And, and the second Vulture arriving as well for Iris, but Iris has got a siege tank out with the support of the Marines. Uh, but C really is not pushing out against Iris' siege tank, and Iris almost getting a siege tank caught on the ramp, and Iris' siege tank coming under serious fire. The first vulture goes down, and SCV is involved as well in the battle. More Marines coming in. Iris is taking the second vulture down, uh, and he's lost two of his Marines in the process, but Iris looks like he's actually going to win this battle because even though he's he's lost some Marines, he's managed to save his siege tank. C really managed to get the scout, but it cost him a lot. It cost him two vultures as well as a, a Marine or two, and now Iris has got two machine shops worrying, and, it, and C really really doesn't have even a single machine shop, which means he can't even put down, he's actually gone for Goliath instead, he's put an armory down, that, this is going to be suicidal mo tactical decision by C really, because at least if he had a machine shop, he could get spider mines and lay spider mines down between his bases and Iris's. As it is, he's going to have nothing to be able to stop Iris marching down uh, up up the ramp and, and setting up almost like a contain on him. And Iris is also going to have the benefit of his racks floating over Cyrilis uh, to be able to scout that. Cyrilis now uh, focusing on getting that racks down before Iris' siege tanks arrive. Iris has also got a couple of vultures in there. And remember, Iris with the two machine shops up is going to have the, the upgrades on those vultures to really be able to make maximum use. So Iris is more than likely going to have a huge advantage here. Cyrilis looks like he's now trying to set up a command center uh, but I'm not sure if he's gonna really be able uh, if he's gonna be able to come out of this first push that Iris is making unscathed clever move by Cyrilly putting that racks down in the middle to slow Iris's reinforcements uh, but here comes Iris with the siege tanks uh, his racks is almost burnt down but Cyrilly in a lot of trouble here yeah I, I don't know if he's gonna be able to hold this man there's three siege tanks working there oh and look at that spider mines are out for Iris he did go for the double machine grade upgrades and he's able to lay down mines and the, the Goliaths are gonna have a tough time defending against his as he's got uh, siege tanks knocking on the front door but at the same time we see a couple of vultures going into Iris's base and he's gonna do some harassment on the mineral line back there now we got mines all over the place for uh, for Iris in the base of really and really having a tough time losing a ton of SEVs here and oh uh, some mines almost going right into those and at the same time he, he is taking a, a lot of heavy fire in his mineral line. One of the tanks going down to a siege tank. More SCVs going down at the same time. I Iris is just microing his ass off. But at the same time, just realizing now that he's been losing a ton of SCVs uh, to, to the uh, vultures in the base. And look at that. Oh, the mine just being taken out right before it can do any damage, before it can take out that tank. So it looks like this has actually gone pretty evenly. Both players having lost a lot of SCVs. But I got to say, I wonder if Iris might have actually lost more F SCVs. I can't tell yet. And at the same time, he's got a a lot of vultures continue to try to harass with these mines with those mines not doing a great job of doing much of anything so really i don't know if iris has done too much i, I, I thought he was going to have an overwhelming leader and those mines are still playing a role and still doing a good job of uh, taking out units but it looks like he's actually lost more uh in, in terms of economy than than really has because really just sat in his base with vultures so uh I, iris look at that he's got he's got so few sevs there and uh, at this point i think that just because of poor uh, paying attention uh, at, at the bottom right at his own base, he, he lost way more than he should have, and now he's actually at a slight disadvantage. Yeah, you're, you've, hit, you've hit the nail on the head. Unfortunately for Iris, um, he didn't notice those two vultures. He was so busy microing hard and hard and hard in Cyrilli's base. And Cyrilli, once he got those vultures in, he just left them on attack mode. He didn't do anything with them. He wasn't microing them. Uh, and Iris was too busy sending his reinforcements up uh, to reinforce his attack on his attack on Cyrilli's base that he wasn't really able to do any damage to Cyrilli as a consequence. Uh, and now Iris is in huge, huge trouble because Cyrilli did do more damage to Iris's economy than Iris did to Cyrilli's. And meanwhile, Cyrilli also got his natural expo up, uh, although he hasn't been able to take it because of the uh, spider mines in uh, s blocking that natural expo. But Cyrilli has now got uh, siege shanks as well as Goliaths. Iris has got s a couple of siege shanks and and vultures. Iris is trying to try and set up some sort of a contain against Cyrilli uh, while those vulture mines still hold, while those vulture spider mines still hold. And that's why he's sending those two siege shanks up. And this could be key here for Iris if he can hold out, hold off the contain and get that contain up and running. Uh, using the time. It looks like Iris is actually going to be able to get that contained in. So he's got four vultures blocking the route, and he's got siege tanks as well. So Cyrilli might be forced to sacrifice some... Uh 
Uh, but Iris doesn't seem to have Siege Mode yet. He needs to set up Siege Tanks on Siege Mode. Or Iris is going to lose these Siege Tanks. He's trying to get those Siege Tanks in position. This could be disastrous for Iris. He still hasn't Siege Mode. And, and now Serial is coming in with the Floating Command Center and the Racks. Uh, and he's going to scan those Spider Mines out. Now Iris has got his Siege Tanks in Siege Mode. He's got the Spider Mines obviously spot for him. Serial has already lost his first Siege Tank. And Iris is going to have a tough time getting this, def uh, getting this Command Center done. Iris is bringing more Siege Tanks to reinforce. So Iris is doing a great job of countering Serial and going for an aggressive tactic here. Serial obviously with the Command Center spot. But Iris has now got four Siege Tanks position and it's going to be incredibly difficult for Cyril to actually get down that ramp and get uh, be able to actually take his natural expo. Meanwhile, Iris isn't able to get his nat natural expo either. Serially is going to just uh, take those spider mines down for us. I still feel Serially with, with a mild, uh, mild advantage in this game right now. Yeah, and definitely those spider mines were giving uh, Iris the vision that he needed to maximize the range of those siege tanks. And now that he doesn't have that, you can see that the, the, the command center is actually going to benefit a lot now that he has the range to spot those units. And look at this, trying to draw fire using his siege tank, uh, sorry, using his command center, landing it, and then now just pushing up his siege tanks and trying to uh, get some free shots on those tanks. It looks like it really didn't work all that well for him, but he does have the... Oh, man, look at that. Iris takes out all of the siege tanks there, so he continues to keep that exp that, that contain uh, all over... Um, really, I keep forgetting this kid's name. And uh, so now really actually having a, a very tough time trying to get outside of his base and set up that, that expansion. And, and at this point, Iris is kind of slowly working his way back into this game, even though he lost all those units. And look at this. He's trying to force his way again with his command center, but instead the command center ends up bottlenecking himself. And while he manages to clear out a couple of the tanks that were in the top left of his natural expansion, he isn't able to get all of the tanks. So now he is at a unit disadvantage in terms of... Um, units against siege tanks, but he is sending more vultures to try to harass uh, Iris and send, lay mines all over, get some scouting information. Uh, no, it looks like he's actually thinking about flanking. No, it looks like he's actually just mining up the map, so uh, I can't actually tell you what he's doing because he's just running around with those vultures, but I thought he was going to go try to flank them, and uh, he still hasn't managed to get down that command center. Yeah, what he's trying to do is uh, try and set up a contain and try and uh, cut off Iris' supply route and prevent Iris from reinforcing his forces that are that are holding Cyrilly at bay uh, so that he can finally take down Iris' defenses. Uh, and that's why he's putting the spider mines all over the map, just to basically limit Iris' mobility. Uh, and he's actually doing quite a job, uh, a good job of doing and succeeding in doing that. Iris has fought himself back into the game. It is now Iris is going to be forced to build his academy. Cyrilly actually has two factories on top of Iris now, and now Iris is going to commit his forces to finally take down... Uh, sorry, Cyrilly is going to commit his forces to finally take down Iris' uh, blockade, and he is going to be able to clear it out, because Iris can't bring any reinforcements to help the siege tank. Iris, with the one siege tank left, is going to get finished off with a spider mine, and now Iris laying the spider mines of his own with, with, with his own vultures, and his vultures are going to get caught by Cyril. He's lost two vultures in the process. Cyril's got about six or eight vultures. Cyril definitely, I still feel, is in the stronger position, because Iris, I'm not sure, has recovered from that massive economic hit that he took earlier on in the game, uh, but he has slowed Cyril down a lot, and Cyril did lose a lot of units in trying to resecure that expansion, and Iris has got his expansion up and running. So it's really anyone's game, uh, right now, although Cyrilly has had four factories up for a little bit longer than Iris. Yeah, and, and not to mention, C really is managing to get his base secured. And look at that little contain that he's got. Uh, I think they're just spider mines around the base of Iris. But if you look at the mini-map, you see a nice bit of yellow just surrounding the red. And uh, really, that means that he's got scouting information, which he's just he just used right there. And uh, he's going to be able to um, base his strategies off of that information as he gleans it from time to time. And right now, it looks like uh, Iris is trying to send out his vultures, go all the way around the map, stay away from those mines, stay away from that information giving uh, areas that have been set up and in the meantime it looks like really is trying to harass the expansion of Iris but it looks like he's gonna be caught by Iris's tanks before he can get over there to do any damage and now now we see Iris actually getting caught a little out of position there with his vultures uh, taking a lot of free hits losing a few of them trying to take a stand but really poor position to do that now he's trying to reinforce with his own tanks but he is just way too out of position he's never gonna get those tanks up he doesn't get any shots on the uh, tank of, of really and he's not gonna be able to do much damage at all on this point look at the line that we're starting to see form across the middle of the map and that is the contain that really is setting up on iris and iris is gonna have a tough time breaking through that uh unless maybe we start seeing some dropship play 
Yeah, Iris is in huge trouble. He, he's in no position to actually spend the resources to get dropships. He's almost managed to clear this. Oh, oh brilliant! Firemine by Iris takes out a siege tank along with a bunch of other stuff, but Serially has got reinforcements coming and he has got that floating racks over Iris. Uh, and I do think that Serially still probably has the economic advantage. Serially, crucially, also had his second gas up for much longer than Iris has had his second gas up because there was a point where Serially had his second gas up and Iris hadn't even started taking the extractor. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Serially is trying to clear out Iris's one remaining siege tank that's holding the fort for him and he does manage to do that. So Iris left with no siege tanks in defense and Serially has about five siege tanks already and Iris is not going to be able to produce more than two siege tanks on the time. Serially also has a lot more factories with machine shops on them. So Iris relying primarily on his vultures and, and almost suiciding his vultures a lot of the time. He's now trying to push up the middle through that small path that he's managed to clear to force Serially to give up the position that he's established uh, and looks like he's managed to do that a little bit and force Serially out. Uh, so Iris is going to try and uh, nuke that uh, the, the temple exploit looks like of Serially just south of Serially's main. Uh, but Serially is still with the dominant position of the map now taking an expansion at the 12 o'clock position as well or at the 11.30 position if you want to call it that while making a push for Iris's expansion because Iris's siege tanks are out of position Serially still with the floating barracks Iris lost his barracks early on to Serially's Goliath uh, and now Iris is in a huge trouble here because Serially has got three or four times the amount of tanks that he does uh, and, and Iris is, is really really in trouble here can you imagine if they allowed allied mines to be legal? How awesome would that be? That would that would change the gameplay of TVT completely. We'd be seeing all different unit compositions. It's too bad that they don't allow that because I think that would make for some exciting games. Uh, anyway, a little bit of a tangent there. It was just kind of daydreaming. And it looks like really is now starting to be able to lay siege on some of the factories in the main base of Iris. And if Iris cannot break this constricting Cobra that it, or Cobras don't constrict, constricting Boa constrict that's around his uh, neck right now. He, he's gonna have a. He's, he's not gonna be able to win this game. If you look at that 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 yellow around the red is just getting uh, bigger and bigger and tighter and tighter. And right now, Iris is just working his best to try to get out of that. But he is just so caught between spider mines and tanks that he doesn't know where to go. I mean, it's really uh, there's not much for him to do at this point because he's just so well contained. The only thing that hasn't uh, been done is a lot of turrets because uh, we haven't seen any dropships to warrant that and here we see what might be the final stand no it looks like iris is going to be uh lose all of his units right out there from really really continuing to constrict around uh the neck of iris and the berserker might go down he is stuck in his base and he cannot fight his way out yeah, and, and, and it's sad, really, because Iris is going down playing aggressive, exciting StarCraft. He made a good move early on, and it was a little bit careless, not really on top of his game, didn't notice the two Vultures sneak in, and that Vulture harass killed him, even though his attack on his opponent was, was superior and his overall tactics were superior, but he just didn't leave anything back to defend, uh, and, and now he's, he's just going to be pretty much out of this game. Iris trying to set up spider mines around uh, really his tanks to try Ooh. and take them out, and he managed to get three tank kills with spider mines, but now his his natural is under siege, not really uh, able to mine properly or get gas properly from it, uh, and Serially is knocking at his door, and it's only a matter of time before Iris goes down, but he's going down fighting. Yeah, it looks like uh, Karma is a bitch, and he's getting paid back for going battle cruises in the last game. Uh, he certainly does not have that opportunity in this game, and uh, really, really playing a good game of StarCraft. I mean, just brilliant TVT. Uh, th you, you really can't take anything away from him, because uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, he had the foresight to send some vultures in to harass Iris as Iris was trying to... Um, kill him and, and and early on that's what won the game for him so great decisions by him and oh man just look at those mines taking out tanks left and right there is not much for Iris to do and oh big surround more tanks going down and that that is probably going to be it for Iris I don't think he's got anything left I don't think he's got any more units that he can throw away to spider mines really because that, that's how I'm looking at it at this point is he's just throwing units away to spider mines and uh and really brilliant spider mines from really yeah, I, I, I mean, this, this game, this game was over a few, probably ten minutes ago almost, uh, when really yeah. got an advantage. Really, he's played some from pretty solid StarCraft, but I think you're giving him a, a little bit too much credit. I mean, not to take any, anything away from the kid, he's played good StarCraft, but uh, I, I don't think he expected to get the sort of uh, mileage he got out of his first uh, those two harassing vultures as he actually ended up getting the amount of damage he inflicted on Iris. I don't think he he could have dreamed of inflicting that much damage on Iris, uh, but he got very very lucky. And now Iris with three vultures in really is uh, expansion at the 11 11:30 position, as if that's going to change anything. But Iris is the kind of player who fights till his last breath, and finally he GGs uh, and really takes the win. But uh, I, I do think really did have a, a massive stroke of luck, uh, or call it carelessness on Iris's part. It's it is.
is a deserved victory, yes, um, but I think the scale of it has probably been exaggerated. Um, not to say that, that that really isn't a good player, but uh, um, I don't think he can he can really declare himself to be at the top of the tree from from the sort of victory that he's achieved there. Nevertheless, the score is now leveled at 1-1 between CJ and Istro, uh, and uh, Iris is out. So it's going to be interesting to see who comes out to face C really in game two. All right, let's get right to it. Game I three, hope sorry. for someone big. Let's get some big names out here. See you guys there.